This is the world of the campus vets. I'm so emotionally attached to him. I'm worried that he won't make it. I'm very concerned she's got a deep-seated infection in her udder that is a mastitis. If his eyes aren't right, he can't eat. They'll just go up to their food and they'll snap at it and they miss. Western College of Veterinary Medicine, students learn to save the lives of animals using the latest advances in medical technology. Hey, big guy. Uh, big sumo. Everybody in the clinic has fallen in love with sumo. There he goes. A ward of the college, homeless sumo, has become an instant favorite among the students. I mean, he's so cute. <laughs> You kind of take him for a walk and you can't get two feet from the door and somebody wants to pet him. The seven-month-old Sharpay appears to be in good health, but has a serious heart condition. The right side is very much enlarged, kind of hitting the sternum. Sumo won't live long without corrective surgery. Student Hugh Miller scrubs in alongside resident Dr. Lori McDougall. The pulmonic valve is the valve that's connecting the right side of the heart to the lungs. And this valve in sumo is too small, so the right side of his heart has to work a whole lot harder than his left right now to pump it through that small opening. So the plan for today is trying to make that opening bigger. Everybody's hoping sumo's going to pull through because we all love him so much. No one is rooting more for the sick pup than student Becky Corvin. He's a really special little guy. He's really well-behaved and really smart. Becky plans on adopting Sumo when he recovers from surgery. I'm going to be a vet, so who better to adopt him than I'll know how to take care of him when he gets sick. If Sumo's surgery is a success, he'll have a new lease on life and a new home. She gave birth just two weeks ago. Now the 10-year-old cow can barely move and her appetite is off. It's a worry for cattle ranchers Leonard Wolf and his brother Eddie. She's one of their best breeding cows. She was raised as a calf and last three years she brought us each year a set of twins. Student Jennifer Dodd works with faculty veterinarian Dr. Clark and intern Dr. Jansen. They're trying to figure out why the cow is moving so slow. I think on the right front, she looks like she's stepping like more heel first. I would agree with you, and I think the toe's slightly overgrown, overgrown as well. Overgrown too, yeah. But she doesn't look obviously lame on any no. one particular leg. No. So far, we can't really say for sure that she's lame on one particular leg, just overall stiffness. The team suspects that an infection of the udder called mastitis could also be a factor. Uh, red's back. Oh, that's not safe. A closer examination is necessary, but there's a good chance they'll get kicked in the process. That's where the tilt table comes in. Michelle Telford has a unique job. She's a foster mom to abandoned dogs, like three-year-old Buddy. He likes to play. We had an immediate bond right off the bat, so he's always been special to me. But the English setter Cross has a problem that's keeping him from finding a loving home. He had a lump on his tail from wagging it and banging onto things, so we had the lump removed because it was irritating him. Since the bump was removed, Buddy won't leave his tail alone. If he isn't watched, he will chew his bandage right off the end and uh, the wound will open. We put um, bitter apple spray and some yucky tasting cream on it to deter him, but it doesn't work. The only thing that stops Buddy from reaching his tattered tail is this cone-shaped collar. OK, let's go to the vet. Let's go. Michelle and Buddy make their way to the vet college for a tail examination. 
He's a wonderful boy. He's a loving companion. He just has this one little issue with his tail, and we just want to make it so that somebody will see how wonderful he is and uh, take him on as their own dog. Surgery is underway to widen a narrow valve that is making Sumo's heart work dangerously over time. Resident Dr. Lori McDougall uses a real-time x-ray machine called a fluoroscope to guide her way to the defective valve. What we've done is put a pigtail catheter through the introducer um, to the level of the right heart. The next thing we're going to do is inject some contrast under pressure to outline the right ventricle and the pulmonic valve. What that's going to do is show us exactly where the valve is, and that will aid us in positioning our balloon. Once the balloon is in place, it will be inflated. Hopefully it will stretch the constricted heart valve, but positioning the balloon will be difficult. Sometimes it takes a little bit of maneuvering to get it down into the right place. Several attempts later, the team's frustration is growing. We just can't get it flipped around in the muscle. It just keeps getting stuck. So we're almost ready to bail because we're not making any progress. I'd rather not even watch at all because I'm so emotionally attached to him. I'm worried that he won't make it. Now that the sick cow is up on the tilt table, a closer inspection is easier and safer. So far, student Jennifer Dodd can't find any sign of infection. She's a little bit stiff, and part of her tenderness could be related to the fact that her feet need a little bit of trimming. We're just doing a regular um, foot trim, so her toes were a little bit long, so we're just trimming like you trim your, your fingernails cutting them back and then evening out the surface so she weight bears properly on it. While she's up on the table, we should... Now their attention turns to the infected udder. Do you guys want to come take a look? I feel gaspable. You can feel the udder, as you say, almost bubbling under your head. Yeah. Now, does it feel warm on that side? Oh, yeah. I mean, so it, it's really hot. I'm very concerned that she's got a nasty infection in there. We can um, see a lot of really foul-smelling, yellow-brown pus coming out of the teat that indicates it's pretty severe. Next, will surgery solve the problem with Buddy's tail? Michelle Telford and her foster dog, Buddy, arrive at the college to have his badly chewed tail examined. says that he's three years old. Student Dana Madsen and intern Talitha Nair suspect the dog's tail chewing may be rooted in more than an irritated wound. Anxiety can manifest itself in different ways. They can chew on their tails. Sometimes they chew on their front limbs. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, sweetheart. It's painful for him, so. We're gonna give him a little bit of sedation. There's the end of the vertebrae that's sticking out, uh, which would be very painful. This doesn't look like it's a healing wound. They decide to surgically remove the infected part of the tail and seal the new exposed tip with a flap of skin. Potentially, when he wakes up, that area is going to be less painful, less sensitive, and hopefully, he'll leave it alone. The smell is coming from a bad case of mastitis, an infection in one quarter of the cow's udder. If Jennifer and the rest of the team don't clean it out, it could turn into gangrene. We need to get out all this pussy material that's in here. The four quarters of the udder are actually separate. They, there is no interior um, connections between them. So this infection is completely contained to that one quarter. That quarter will never milk again. But the infection is not coming out easily. More drastic measures are needed. We feel that probably the best thing is to actually amputate the teat, which will open up the uh, rest of the, that portion of the udder and allow the debris to drain out on its own. Okay, can we just keep squeezing harder? First, a shot of local anesthesia so the cow won't feel a thing. That's good. 
Well, this is the first time for me to do something like this, so I'm ready. And you'll be surprised sometimes how firm the tissue feels. Yeah. Good. Good job. I thought it might be more difficult to cut through the teeth than it was and that she might react a little bit more. But it went really, really well. The surgical team is trying to expand a constricted valve in Sumo's heart. After numerous attempts to place a balloon guide wire, they hit their mark. By inflating the balloon for about 10 seconds at a time, we are trying to stretch the valve and stretch the scar tissue that was making it narrow. Then we got the balloon to float where it should, and we dilated it three times. It's a little scary for a little bit there, but so relieved that they got it. As soon as Sumo recovers, an ultrasound examination is done to see if the blood flow pressure through the valve has decreased. If that gradient has decreased by 50%, we know we've had a successful ballooning. Faculty veterinarian Dr. Kimberly Tryon delivers the much anticipated verdict. Unfortunately, because of that wind velocity, it doesn't really look like there's that much change. The ultrasound results were very frustrating. What they measured was actually higher than what they measured before surgery last time. The operation was unsuccessful, but the veterinary team hasn't given up on Sumo. For now, they'll go home with Becky, his new adoptive owner. I'm gonna take him home and pretty much treat him like a normal dog, pretend he's got a normal heart. Student Dana Madsen prepares for her first partial tail amputation. What I'm doing right now is I'm feeling for the intervertebral spaces to try and judge where I want to take it off. Dana marks off the infected area of Buddy's tail with a needle. Minutes later, it's over. This little mouth-like looking thing is what we're going to sew shot. We've done what we can to take off the damaged part of the tail. It looks good. We're hoping for the best. The physical incentive to chew has been removed. Now they have to address the psychological barriers. We're sending home Michelle with some information on some behavioral modification techniques she can try. Um, he's had quite a lot of upheaval in his life, so I'm sure that contributes to his anxious nature. The amputation of the teeth will allow the infection to drain and the cow will eventually heal. Hi, Mom. That a girl. In you go. She should do really well. It's been a great learning experience. Even though the cow is no longer firing on all four cylinders, she can still produce milk from her three remaining teats. That's a relief to her owners, Eddie and Leonard. If she's uh, healthy, she'll go back to pasture, she'll be bred. Maybe she, next year she'll have uh, another set of twins. Coming up, Sumo's exciting turnaround. I think he's my favorite. He's not my prettiest. He's not my fanciest. He's my best one, I think. Oliver is a red-eared slider turtle, a breed commonly sold in pet stores. He's one of nine turtles that live with Doug Jakes and his wife Enid. Like Oliver, many of the couple's turtles were rescued from a life of abuse and neglect. My daughter started the rescue service, and uh, she needed an overflow, let's put it that way. And we have a large yard and um, a little bit of room, and uh, we took on half of her turtles. But it's just that One of Oliver's eyes has been swollen for nearly a week. If his eyes aren't right, he can't eat. They'll just go up to their food, and they'll snap at it, and they miss. Doug and his family hope exotic specialist Dr. Denilyn Parker can help Oliver.
Sumo is back, the team will make another attempt to expand his restricted heart valve. We don't want to lose Sumo. We have a person who's getting very attached to Sumo um, named Becky. Vet student Becky, Sumo's new owner, will be at his side. We don't want her to lose her buddy, so we would like to try ballooning again. The surgical team goes for round two of the ballooning process. You want me to go there? They use a larger balloon to stretch the valve. Oh boy. That looks good. So we got the balloon exactly where we wanted it. A quick test of the blood flow velocity through the newly expanded valve shows a huge improvement. 45! Yay! Awesome. That's wonderful. Excellent. But Becky knows anesthesia could be distorting the results. They'll have to wait for tomorrow's ultrasound to know if the surgery really worked this time. I'm going to get Buddy. He's ready to be discharged today. Um, we're going to try sending home Michelle with some information on behavioral modification techniques that she can try. Buddy's recovery from a partial tail amputation will take time and patience. Michelle feels it's too much to ask of a new foster family. I'm thinking of adopting Buddy yeah. myself, but no matter how long it takes, whether um, a perfect home comes along or I keep him, he will be taken care of. Hi, Buddy. He deserves a second chance at a good, happy life. Hi, Buddy. Hi. Ultimately, Michelle will be successful in getting Buddy to chew a toy rather than his tail. <laughs> hey, bud, let's go home. This is Oliver. This is Oliver. And what is going on with Oliver? I'm a little worried about his eye. Oliver is not himself since one of his eyes started to swell. His appetite is off and he's even more lethargic than normal. So I'm going to get ready to, to take a look at the eye and um, stain it to see if there's a, an ulcer. Come on, stick your head out. <laughs> I need to be faster. Oh, yeah. There we go. This is a fluorescein stain, and what it does is when you put it on the eye, it doesn't stick to the surface of the eye. So it only stays if the cornea has a, an ulcer or a scratch. Scratches on the cornea of the turtle's eye will pick up the stain and show up under a special light. The actual cornea itself looks fine from what he's letting me see. So no damage to the cornea, no, no scratching right. that, so this is more of an infection. If Oliver has a serious infection, it will likely show up in his blood. If he has a high white blood cell count or a very, very low white blood cell count, that means his body isn't able to handle it and he needs help. So that's why we took the blood work. We'll get the results back later today. Yep. Oh, today. In the meantime, Doug needs to raise the temperature of Oliver's environment. <laughs> it will help boost the turtle's immune system. We'll take Oliver home and we'll uh, raise his temperature a little bit and we'll wait for Dr. Parker to call us about the results. Next, the vets find out if sumo surgery is a success. Tension hangs in the air as Sumo's blood flow pressure is checked by ultrasound. It needs to be half of what it was before surgery for the young Sharpe to live a long, healthy life. It looks like we're getting about 66 pressure gradient. Yes! She's happy. That's excellent. The pressure gradient has decreased almost in half which is a significant and very positive improvement and gives Sumo, hopefully, a good quality of life. This is our little club med. It's nothing fancy, but they like it. <laughs> Oliver is back at home and back to normal. The results of the blood test came back with no infection, so uh, we went with Dr. Parker's suggestion, and so we had to raise the temperature in his pool a little bit. It's only about four degrees, but it made enough difference that he started eating better again. There he goes. Well, not all at once, you guys. 
Oliver likely had a low-grade infection, so low it didn't register on the blood test. By raising the temperature in the turtle's environment, Doug gave Oliver's immune system the boost it needed to fight it off. In the weeks since his heart surgery, young Sumo has grown, along with Becky's attachment to him. Good boy. He's always happy and he makes you happy. He's pretty much just living a normal life now, playing lots and going for walks and chewing his bone. Is he down? Now that Sumo is well enough to enjoy life, Becky feels he has much to offer. She plans on having Sumo trained and certified as a therapy dog. He really has this special way of putting smiles on, on people's faces. Shake, pop, shake. Good boy. Good boy. Just loves everybody. Sumo. Oh, it's our little stampede. <laughs> Quite often, what a Sunday looks like around her house. Far too many turtles. Oh, from this guy here? Yes. 